Maxer. Videos. Crazy editing. Well, best believe we're back here with more Maxer on the channel. And this time it's involving Baldur's Gate 3. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, like, I have actually played Baldur's Gate 3. I'm on Act 3 currently in Baldur's Gate 3. But my friends have abandoned me and we have not played in forever. So I'm pretty pissed. <laughs> uh, but I'm down to watch this video regardless. And sure, if it spoils me, whatever. Because at this point, it's been months since our last time playing together. And Alicia's tired of it. Alicia's tired of it. And she wants to know more. And she wants to enjoy the goddamn thing. So let's get straight into it before we get started on the vibes. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Leave a comment down below to beat the algorithm. What? Check us out over on Twitch. I stream every single day at Alicia X Life. You're currently watching Alicia X Death. Alicia X Life is my Twitch. I'd linked in the description. Yes. The description. Is the original video. Don't be a dickhead. Support the original video too. And while you're here, support me as well. Let's get straight into it. This video is going to spoil the entire game. Baldur's Gate 3 Whoa! is possibly the funniest game ever made. And I do not think it actually intends to be. Because it's actually trying to be really gay. Taking place in a fantasy world where four adult friends are able to play on the same day. This game faithfully and hilariously recreates the D&D &D experience. All the way down to watching your friends paint the entire ground of their camp with your combustible blood. Which, uh, turns out, can act as the fuse for a bomb. That's so cool! I didn't know that! And that is just the beginning of the absolute insanity that this game has to offer. Because in the world of Baldur's Gate, anything is possible, and everything is determined via dice roll. And yes, that does determine whether or not you're going to be transformed into cats four turns before the building explodes. I think this oh. is the best game ever made, and I'm not even exaggerating. But before beginning our amazing adventures, we have to choose our characters very carefully. We've got Asterian, The Dark Urge, Squid Game Huggy Wuggy, all oh. the customization you can think of for my human male fighter. But today, we're going to be playing as Angyat Riz King. Are they Yay! Riz King! <laughs> them wild magic sorcerer with absolutely unnatural charisma. Charisma is so powerful that I convinced a boss to kill his minions, to kill his dog, to kill himself. Then can What the fuck? <laughs> I'm sorry, this dude was so rizzed up. He's like, mm, why fight it when I can persuade you to just do all this shit? convinced him to join me against the forces of Satan 30 hours after I sent him to hell. Coincidentally, Angyat Riz King is not a smart man. My playthrough was classified as morally ambiguous because I usually did the right thing very badly. You're probably wondering right about now, Maxor, why are you speaking to a sentient rat in hell? That is a good question. With a because rats are awesome. Because rats are the best and we love them. And I kept trying to... Like, Azu is our druid, and I kept making him talk to the rats, because I was like, one of them has to know something. <laughs> bad answer. I thought it would be really funny to sell my soul to Lucifer, and then break into his house, kill his incubus that he uses to have sex with himself, oh. steal my soul back along with everything worth money, which is the real reason that I'm here. Make a break for it just in time to get caught, and be forced to kill Satan, who, by the way, has 666 HP and sings about how he's going to kill you like a Disney villain. Was this the ethical- Honestly, though? If a villain's gonna sing about killing me, that's kind of fabulous. You know what? It's a commitment level that I enjoy. <laughs> Force of action. Maybe. But in retrospect, I did not think I would get caught. So, on top of his immaculate Riz and dubious ethical success, the most important detail of On God Riz King is that he is a wild magic sorcerer, which is definitely a class to choose. Imagine for a moment that you and your 20 allies are trying to push past a narrow corridor when me and the fellas cast a swarm of bees, black tentacles, and a goopy fart cloud, which kills your entire team before you are able to see anything. Oh. The strategy, the fucked up hentai. Now, if that was <laughs> That's kind of similar to the strat that I used with Azu and the gang, because Azu put down his thorns as the druid. And then we would try to use any abilities that had pushback to put them onto the thorns. And we would kind of go from there. 
was to hypothetically happen, you would theoretically accuse me of a lot of bullshit, to which I would respond with, yes, officer, I did just disintegrate that child. And what's more, I have committed <gasps> crimes you can't even charge me for. Say hello to the spell, feign death, which works by placing your allies into a coma. This, I would argue, is not a very useful spell. But if I were to say, give all my money away to a lucky merchant, then he would trust me enough to initiate nap time. And after carefully concealing my presence in a conspicuous dark blob, I will be able to steal my money back plus interest. And what's more, I get a fucking- Wait, this- this is the smartest stealing bastard I've seen in my life. <laughs> I'm so- Cause we- cause listen, we rob hella people when we play. But like- <laughs> His manipulation is so high <laughs> that it makes me kind of concerned. <laughs> Man is a genius. Discount next time I show up. Is combat requiring just a little too much thought? Are you perhaps getting tired of taking any damage? Then, my friend, look no further than the Globe of Invulnerability, which does exactly what you think it does a little too well. The only caveat being that the invulnerability happens to work on enemies, and they tend to see oh. vulnerability as an advantage. Meaning, literally every fight that I use it in devolves into the funny friendship circle. Say, for instance, that you were an enemy whose entire purpose is to explode yourself. If you happen to wander into the orb of comedy, you would be forced to unsuccessfully activate your bomb vest 20 times in a row, hoping and praying for a death that I cannot provide you. Honestly, that sounds demented! That sounds sick and terrible and amazing. <laughs> Wait, this uh, this class seems way more. I started off as a sorcerer, and then I had to switch because my team, like my whole party, would not buy fucking potions and wouldn't strategize enough to live, and none of them had healing shit. So I had to switch to a cleric, and I was just, mind you, I do like it though because I just get to summon a million and one things. Like I summon spirit guardians. I summon my weapon, I summon a new ass, big ass golem thingy, and I think if I level up one more time, you can summon basically a god. So like, to be fair, I'm kind of loving my ca my character now. If you're creative enough, okay. you don't even have to play most combat encounters. I once fought a boss that began every fight by instantly killing me. Now, most normal people in this situation would reload the game, try some other quests, literally anything that uses your brain. But I am not normal people. I'm autistic. How else do you think this video gets made? The neurotypicals could- But yeah, the neurotypicals could never understand. <laughs> that is fair. Do this shit. Yeah. <laughs> so instead, we are going to cleverly sneak up on him with my entire party, then cast fear on him, forcing the men to flee while me and the fellows beat him to death. Thrive, bestie, thrive! Hammers. Another time, I was stuck in a difficult combat encounter with a invincible doom spider, at which point I transformed him into a more reasonable animal and forgot about him for the rest of the fight. Of course, magic doesn't <laughs> always have to be used for combat or stealing. Sometimes it can be used for productive things, like Remote dead I'm oh, sorry, the animation for feigned death where it just smacks them in the fucking head is so satisfying. I love it. <laughs> Imagine for a moment that you were tasked with solving a murder because the elephant police are being racist. Not against non-elephants, mind you. Just immigrants. My guy is a... <laughs> BITCH! <laughs> Actionary Rant Soda. You would be able to quickly resolve this situation by oh. performing necromancy and asking the murder victim who killed them. Alternatively, if I wanted to, say, kill everyone in the goblin camp without conventional methods, I could simply cast Speak with Animals and gently convince the local spiders to begin an arachnid race war. In fact, you can use this on any animal in the game, including threatening rats into revealing their cheese location or the cat that narrows The cheese location! In the underdark? The under. Our detective. Although I do think it is very strange that I don't have to cast it before speaking to gnomes. But honestly, out of all the magical items you can obtain in this game, my favorite was definitely the gamer sups energy drinks because it gives my character <laughs> enough energy to leap 50 feet through the air and gamer sups per turn. It uh, gets mailed to you as this cool alchemy powder, so you can wow. save not him putting it in the lines, it bro. <laughs> gamer sups has all kinds of cool spells like. Grandpa's Ashes, Guacamole Gamer Fart 9000, and my personal favorite, Lean. These are actual <laughs> flavor names. We're also working on getting you guys an official Maxor Cup.
This is not the official Maxor cup. I would put boobs on it. But if you want other <laughs> cups with boobs on them. I appreciate the fact that he says it flat out. If I were to have a cup, it would have boobs. A real one. Real recognize real. <laughs> You can find the shop for them here in Description Alley, right next to the Subscribe Store, and use code Maxwell I love the Subscribe Store! Spells. I am not responsible for what comes after. See, that's what you're talking about. Spread your ass open, dude! You can do the rump shaker, huh? Dude, this car kicks ass, and I can watch Madagascar while I'm driving! Ass. Jesus fucking Christ! Just saw a wizarding duel at- It's like watching Brian get hit by the car all over again. <laughs> ...inside Walgreens. One wizard cast a bullet at the other and stole his magical herbs. Turns out Gale wasn't actually a crip. Or maybe now he is. Wizard oh! truly is amazing out here in Pennsylvania. Because when you join the Wild Magic Gang, you aren't just making a character. You're making a mistake. Wild Magic Sorcerers okay. have a random chance to select an effect from a list of 100. As long as you- this sounds so cool, man! This sounds so cool! <laughs> like, dude, this- Dude, I wanna play as wild! I saw the mod that adds 80. Every spell my character cast was a guarantee that something will happen, and whether or not I wanted that to happen is a different story entirely. Consider the scenario that you and your- Heroic party are desperately trying to escape an underwater prison. And no, this time it wasn't for bestiality. It was for hate crimes. You have five turns to escape before your character reenacts the Titanic. Oh, this is not good. The critical mistake of casting a spell, which triggers the random effect of lock all doors, magically transforming this exploding prison into an exploding coffin. That is a reload. Or how about. Holy shit! I just, it just, this is like the funnest build! Like, I thought mine was fun! Cause I just keep summoning shit and going, HIT ME! TRY TO WALK NEAR ME! And I just walk at them and they die cause I have spirit guardians on. But like, I, <laughs> Dude, this is fucking sick! The time that I was tasked with holding onto a torch under penalty of death, whereupon the game decided that it would be really funny if I was banished to another dimension. Because it would be even funnier if I happened to reload the game and immediately get petrified. Okay, look, I am exaggerating a little bit here. After all, the chances of you transforming into an ovine on your third try would be pretty low. Of course, wild magic doesn't always have to ruin the game. Sometimes it can do really helpful things, like permanently inflict my character with the clown curse, which is, by every metric, an objective upgrade. I had an emotional cutscene after I got this, and I... <laughs> Listen, Carlac, I know your heart's breaking down, and, you know, it's, it's only a matter of time. And we need to go complete this quest to help you further, but... Clown face! Selfie! Quirky! Honk honk! <laughs> I'm sure it made everyone feel better. Here we have the fight with the giant robot where I accidentally transformed myself into a cheese wheel. <gasps> this gives us all cheese kinds wheel. of new abilities like cheesy smell. Cheesy which smell! Would be really good if uh, the robots could smell. Now, due to the obvious <laughs> limitations of my class, Baldur's Gate 3 provides a myriad of options for customization, leveling, and companions, who, by the way, can be respected into any other class, making strategies like the four-man gambling squad and Jurassic Park. The four-man gambling squad. Oh my god. Yes. That's the dream. Completely possible but not exactly viable. Personally, I find it completely bullshit that I do not get an intimidation bonus for walking into the bank with three fucking velociraptors. There should like, be an intimidation bonus. do you bonus. see this very often? <laughs> so, to get at the true heart of the Baldur's Gate 3 experience, we have to make some friends and eventually have sex with most of them. Honestly, it's uh, pretty easy to forget that this game has combat. Personally, though, I didn't get with any of them. Mostly because I can't show it, but also because I was interested in a more... Acquired taste. That's right, baby. Gay sex with Squidward. I o Uh... <laughs> I'm... Yeah, I'm... I mean... 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> Always dreamed of touching those Squidward tentacles. All right, I shouldn't have it played. I should have it played further. I should have it played further. That pause is crazy. No, <laughs> it's so much worse. It was so much worse than I hit play. I played his clarinet. Also, played his clarinet. That one. <laughs> Human, the camp skeleton just insults you for having no bitches. And thus, thou art alone. <laughs> Shadow Heart, more affectionately referred to as Shart, is a cleric of Shar that I spent the entire game gaslighting into a religious fundamentalist. Then, as soon as that became slightly inconvenient, beat her to death with my entire party so badly that I could not revive the body for round two. Now, Shadow Heart could have survived if I actually trusted her, but unfortunately, she is a white woman. <laughs> and I don't trust the host, Kale. <laughs> Oh, see that? <laughs> Alicia's gonna sip for a drink and hit play. <laughs> is an aggressively bisexual wizard with a nuclear bomb inside of his chest, and uh, it wants me to feed it boots. Now, Gale claims. <laughs> I mean, he does like artifacts. So yeah, he likes eating them boots. Claims this is because of his relationship with an actual goddess, but I don't believe him. Not because that's completely insane, but because I've seen how Gale behaves around me. This motherfucker is gay. And since I've covered all this game's wacky and funny spells, I decided that I was going to respect Gale into a barbarian and give him a gun. This wizard may be out of spells, but he is not out of shells. Will is a dare. Is there actually a gun in the game? I've never had a Glock. Just a Glock. No, there is. Oh, mods. Oh, thank God. I was like, are you kidding me? I could have had a nine. <laughs> Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> to a barbarian and give him a gun. This wizard may be out of spells, but he Oh, it was an arrow. Yeah. Will is a daring and noble warlock who is constantly told what to do and treated like a dog by a demon girl. So I don't understand why he doesn't enjoy that. This game's writing is unrealistic. Diesel <laughs> is a gift Yankee. <laughs> Listen, hot demon mommy does, you know... I mean, if it wasn't for the fact his dad's caught up into some bullshit, he might enjoy it. Shit. I mean, <laughs> she's hot. <laughs> ...fighter who, within three seconds of speaking to her, made me decide that yes, I am going to do a racist character today. And over the course of our adventure, Lazel surprised and shocked me by uh, never failing to prove my racism correct. Asterion is, uh, t sorry. I yeah, she really races towards me because I'm a drow. Lazel Lay don't fuck with me for real. <laughs> I forgot I installed that mod. Asterion is a. I installed what mod? <laughs> Adventure. Lazel surprised and shocked me by uh, never failing to prove my racism correct. Asterion is a. Uh... <laughs> Sorry, I forgot I installed that mod. Asterion is a devilishly handsome rogue. That... Oh, oh, the mod to make his face. Yeah. Oh. That specializes in giving enemies the <laughs> devious back shots. This is mostly because Asterion happens to be a literal vampire, which becomes relevant when I sacrifice 7,000 children to him to create the ultimate life form. I promise this scene isn't gay. Unfortunately, this. <laughs> I like the mechanics of this game. <laughs> he was topping. <laughs> Did basically nothing as Asterion proceeded to walk down the hall and get his ass beat to death with hammers. Because out of all the abilities our sacrifice could have given us, Asterion had graciously received the power to continue being useless. Though, to be fair to Asterion, no ultimate vampire twink is going to kill five full-blood Texans on their fifth medella. And oh. Karlak is a very hot barbarian that I use throughout the game. As a punching bag. One time, a Carlac got so. How dare you use our wife? Carlac is literally wife material. I love her so much. How could you let her be a punching bag? That she randomly destroyed every box in a 10 meter radius, repeatedly setting the entire party on fire until we fucking died. It was at this moment I decided that Carlac was going to be the one to disarm every trap in the game for me. Make sure to grab the treasures, Carlac. With our powers combined, we are God the damn. Uh, world's shittiest polycule. Oh. 
Hey, shark. We are having so much fun without Shadow Heart. Hey. So, as the world's <laughs> shittiest polycule, it naturally falls to us to combat the forces of Big Straight and stop the Squidward Ethnostate. Mostly by accident, because if there's one thing that motivates me more than protecting my potential investments, it is stealing from them. <laughs> yes, sir. It is certainly bad if the only bank in the city gets robbed. But don't worry. Okay. I conducted a thorough investigation in my camp, and I have found no evidence of wrongdoing. Quests in Baldur's Gate okay. are, for lack of a better term, fucking. <laughs> you know what I realized? He is the perfect person to play this kind of game. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's one of those things where it's like, you need a chaotic person to really indulge in the chaotic elements. And listen, I think the best part about Baldur's Gate 3 is that it's actually meant for literally anyone. That's the best part about the journey and the adventure. Is it's, it's for any type of player. For a motherfucker to be this weird, though, my god, does it really help, <laughs> help his brain in a way that, that only this game could ever accomplish. ...insane, both in their scope and in content. Mostly the content, with multiple contingencies for failure, partial success, or the classic unrestricted Japanese war crimes. Truly, the sky is the limit in Baldur's Gate, and the only He's chaotic neutral? Dude, it's- it's like, there's so much shit happening that it, it matches his editing style. <laughs> ...are the consequences of your actions. If, for instance, you were to ride the calamari carousel, a future character will roast you for your crimes against God in front of your friends. Your choices matter in Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> One time, I decided to- Yeah, but if my friends judged me for fucking Squidward and having his tentacles shoved up my asshole, are they really friends? Visit I think not. So I could piss off the local genie <laughs> so badly that he sends me to Jurassic Park. <laughs> what the fuck? It's not important right now. <laughs> why, the, why don't we get to Monster Hunter? Why are we here? <laughs> Exploring the non-insane part of the circus, we find ourselves enraptured by the performance of Dribbles the Clown. The only problem being that while investigating a series of murders by shapeshifters, I had oh, met Jesus. Clown, and I was carrying his severed torso in my inventory. Safekeeping. <laughs> so, despite knowing the identity of my gang stalkers, I decided to send a stare into the stage anyways. Mainly because I thought it would be funny. And I was not disappointed. This guy should open a YouTube channel where he promotes an energy drink he intentionally poisons. Now, you're oh, okay. going to be after doing this quest, because unbeknownst to you, one of your crewmates has been replaced by an imposter. Amogus? Sussy Blockers? And worst of all, I am kind of into this. Can you shapeshift yourself pregnant? Oh. So when <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> Whether you know it or not, you are going to be playing Among Us for the next 10 hours. And honestly, playing as the imposter is so much more fun. Which is why, instead of stopping the killings, I decided that I was going to do them myself and eventually join the blood cult by bathing in the blood of the racist elephant to bring about a new future of crimson despair. Oh my god, that sounds like so much more fun! See, my friends would never let me go this route, though. That's the problem. My friends like to do the good thing. They like to be heroes. And I, w I really want to go down, like, the evil path. But they don't fuck with that. And I'm doing a four-person run, so three so three outvoted one. So it's like, if that's what they want, that's what they want. That's fair. Shapeshifters are usually multiracial, by definition. What I'm trying to say with these long anecdotes is that you never just go to the circus in this game, or, God forbid, speak to a clown. Though you are watching this YouTube video, which is close. <laughs> Back to the beginning of Act 1. Welcome to the first major dungeon of the game, appropriately named Central London. And like the actual <laughs> London, it is unfortunately filled with the English. You can uh, really tell because you can't understand anyone and the food is inedible. Oh it my is god, stop! Really shines a where you can do almost anything and an unlucky developer will be forced to code it. There are three targets for you to kill in the goblin camp, or if you're bad enough, Several dozen, each with their own personalities, weaknesses, and premium cheese strategies. Needless to say, uh, this channel is not going to offer you any good advice. After yeah. all, there's a lot of guide videos for this game alongside 
race to your place. So, while I'm not going to be sorting you by phenotype, what I can give you is a taste of the premium cheddar. Okay, so you're gonna want to start out by uh, going invisible and placing a wyvern toxin into the Kool-Aid. Then lead a toast by declaring that we are going to drink until we die. Make sure that oh. Asturian is the one to do it, by the way. We don't need him anymore. Heading inside. Holy shit! We take care of our first target by following her to a secluded location. Okay, I did the same thing. A cloud of daggers, and then initiate oh, we did like basically exchange, locking her into our conversation while she is. Wait, I'm sorry. You did what to keep her? What? Hold on, hold on. Because I did, I did. A following her to a secluded location, summoning a cloud of daggers, and then initiating verbal exchange, locking her into our conversation while she is slowly stabbed. Oh, you talked. He did that first, then talk to her? That's so smart! Death. This isn't considered a crime, by Okay, the way. mind you, I was gonna keep her alive, and then she was like, Oh, I'm gonna kill you ass, lol, XD. And I was like, oh shit. And I started yelling for the guys to come help me. So... <laughs> well, they could just walk out. Just don't hit a piece of wood while you're doing that. Because then, you're not going to be killed for assault. You're going to be killed for destruction of property. The next trick we're going to do is called Minthara Skip, because we are going to be summoning a random spectator to skip to the end of Minthara's life. Just pray to God that she doesn't oh. out easily, because uh, the spectator certainly won't. Finally, we have our third target, Dror Rasglin, who is slightly hard to kill the conventional way. So instead of that, we're going to do something significantly harder. I know, really original strategy, Max. Animals are so fucking funny, they make me want to Welcome to the Underdark. Underdark! Oh, spectator boss fight. Because yes, in addition to having a giant underground area filled with interesting flora and fauna, Baldur's Gate 3 dares to ask the question of what if people in the Underdark had a different skin color to me? And completely unrelated to that, what if there was a lot of slavery? Because it is this very slavery that we are going to take advantage of. Immediately upon entering the world's basement, you're okay. going to head over to the uh, mush- Yes? But what would the world, would it really be accurate to the world building if there wasn't? Mushroom <laughs> Kingdom. And uh, you're gonna get a letter telling you that the princess is now a permanent guest at one of Bowser's seven Koopa hotels. Talking to the giant mushroom, you're gonna have to explain to him how reanimating the bodies of dead velociraptors is technically not a war crime. But what I'm going to do Holy for shit. is definitely a war crime. And after playing a game of Pokemon with the corpses that your enemies reanimated, we steal their boats and progress down the river towards the Iron Fortress of Grimforge. This place Whoa. fucking sucks, Dick. I'm gonna kill myself. No! Welcome to Grimforge, home to many different kinds of people, whether they're enslaved or enslaving. You uh, really only have two options here in the Grimforge. <laughs> eavesdropping in on the local Minecraft Let's Play. We overhear rumors of an ancient and powerful explosive, which will purchase my child labor at least 30 minutes of Roblox time. And after gently ascertaining the location from their bodies, we carefully confiscate the nuclear weapon using a refined negotiation tactic where I lied to them. Oh! Now equipped with the <laughs> most powerful bomb in the game, we are presented with a choice. We can either use this bomb to help the gnome slaves finally achieve their freedom, or we can use it to kill Jor Rasglin. Fuck freedom! We create death and carnage! So, uh, going back to the goblin camp, we discovered yep. <laughs> some experimentation that Jor Rasglin doesn't actually die to the bomb that I just placed. So, uh, into the hole you go, I guess. And that is how you oh. quickly and efficiently speedrun the goblin camp. Make sure to subscribe for more, uh, convenient time saves. <laughs> Peter, what are you doing? Crow. What the fuck? Okay, so the point I'm trying to get across, uh really badly is that this game is utterly massive and it absolutely does not stop you from destroying it because in Baldur's Gate 3 every single mistake you can possibly make is going to come up again and uh most of the time it is in the form of racial conflict for instance do you want to be a good Samaritan and free the deep gnomes from their unjust imprisonment well congratulations you just happened to free the deep gnome clan's grand wizard i hope you're ready for a race war in 20 hours oh okay because, uh, if you happen to misplace a certain bomb then uh he's going to happen to make hiroshima look like a fucking joke 
Personally, this kind of stuff is the funniest shit I've ever seen. Not the racism part, although that is still funny. But rather, <laughs> God the damn it, Max! Joy, <laughs> knowing that your save file has probably already been destroyed without you even knowing it. Since beginning the long process of making this video, I have made a multiplayer warlock named Rizzly Bear alongside my friends Reese and Rizzly Bear. Simpson. And after playing for approximately 10 minutes, I can confirm that my first character inadvertently killed almost everyone he spoke to. And about a half of the time, the reverse was true. A good example of this is the time that I just so happened to wander my character into a literal god who then offered me a pivotal and important quest, prompting me to raise the reasonable inquiry that if she was a god, surely she would be able to kill anyone she wanted. She responded by fucking vaporizing me. <laughs> oh! Overall, this is in every sense of the word a role playing game, provided, of course, you want to. I mean, that is a fair Do thing, though. It was like, she could kill whoever she wanted. Okay, now she killed me. Okay, that makes sense. I'm whoever she wants. Okay. <laughs> Mass murder goblin. Otherwise, uh. Why do you even play video games? We blow shit up in this motherfucker. Better take your sensitive ass back to LinkedIn. <laughs> With scores of amazing and deep content that I unintentionally locked myself out of because we accidentally killed a man named Bingus Bongus. Bingus Bongus! A real one. A strategic and complicated combat and an entire world of possibilities and solutions, which will leave you wondering, how the fuck am I allowed to do this? Is this a glitch or intended behavior? Yes. So while I didn't get to cover everything since uh I'm only human, you can trust me when I say that there is something in this game for everybody. <laughs> ten out of ten. Would unleash <laughs> Nome Hitler again. No don't unleash no Hitler! <laughs> Me, though, I would like to thank all of my amazing patrons, using and sacrificing their funding for only the finest of video game content. As always, more deranged gacha game videos to come. I will be sure to spend all of your money very responsibly. Oh yeah, uh, this video is about Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> Honestly, he's such an incredible creator. <laughs> His videos are a blessing, and we are Since we are blessed to have them. I, <laughs> I, <never laughs> I, what do I even say after a Baxter video? Just always incredible, incredible work by him. The reason why I didn't react to this sooner is because I always let the videos like from the original creator perform before I react to them, uh, just to pay respect to the creators like originally. Uh, a lot of the time when people react to stuff too quickly after something's released, it fucks up the algorithm for them. So. It actually takes away views from the original creator, and I don't fuck with that. So usually I wait till like they get like a like their normal amount of views, or I can wait like at least a while before I react to something. Uh, but I just want to say that's the reason why I waited so long. I know you guys were asking me in the comments and stuff to go check this video out. Uh, that's the reason why it took a while. But uh, thanks for being awesome, and thanks for hanging out. And we'll catch you guys in the next episode of me doing random shit on the internet, such as reacting and playing video games. All right, bye. Oh, if you want to see my Baldur's Gate playthrough, it's in a playlist here on the channel as well. Uh, bye!